Marlborough Sounds is famous for its beauty, clean waters and aquaculture. But it took local iwi, communities and councils 30 years to develop a resource management plan for the sounds that protects certain areas from aquaculture. Earlier this year, New Zealand King Salmon, a Malaysian majority owned company, applied to have the plan changed so they could build salmon farms in the protected zone. Critics say the plan amounts to dairy farming under the sea and points to damage caused by salmon farming in Chile, Norway, Scotland and America. Iwi are divided over the issue. The case is now before the Environment Protection Authority. Yulia Leilua investigates. islands and sunken valleys of the Marlborough Sounds. It's New Zealand's largest marine recreational area south of the Hauraki Gulf. And it's sustained generations of local iwi. All around here, it's our, it's our harvesting ground. If you a bit short on tucky, that's where you went. You went out there and got as much as you like. John Norton and Trevor Tahuaroa Watson know all the good kaimoana spots on Arapawa Island. The tūpuna arrived 200 years ago from Taranaki and settled on this beautiful haven. But it won't be like that for much longer, they say if King Salmon is allowed to build three of nine new salmon farms in the area. Should that come in, it's going to desecrate this place. They're going to make one hell of a mess, and when they've made that mess, they're going to move out. Um, yeah, and leave us with the dregs. We are very disappointed with the company that has made this application for a private plan change and resource consent. We don't consider them to be decent corporate citizens because they are not abiding by the laws of the district council and the citizens and residents of Marlborough and indeed of all of New Zealand. Arapawa is one of many areas protected under the Marlborough Sounds Resource Management Plan. New Zealand King Salmon, a Malaysian majority owned company, wants a private plan change to build three salmon farms on Arapawa and the rest in other protected areas. Instead of going to the council who manage these areas, King Salmon's application is being fast tracked through the new Environmental Protection Authority. There's 150,000 surface hectares in the Marlborough Sounds as an area of which 2,800 has been set aside for mussels. So we haven't been given any space. The five surface hectares we've obtained, we've had to buy and convert mussel farms largely, uh, but the council's not made any space for us. We need to put in a private plan change to uh, create space for salmon that our species can grow and thrive in. King Salmon says the 12 surface hectares they're applying for covers just 0.1% of the Marlborough Sound surface. But the seafloor space it'll affect is much bigger. The project's been deemed nationally significant by the government, who hope to earn a billion dollars in aquaculture sales by 2025. Critics say it's the first step towards privatising the Marlborough Sounds. They have allowed this foreign-owned company, King Salmon, to leapfrog over the top of a democratically constituted district plan and go directly to an agency that they have created for the job. What my experience is so far is that it's as if this EPA has been designed to screw over communities in favour of big business. 
Canberra Sounds has already been a flashpoint between iwi and big business. It was here that the foreshore and seabed debate originated when local iwi went to court over aquaculture development in the region. Ngāti Kuya were at the forefront of that debate and nine years on they say it's frustrating they still have to defend their customary rights against commercial interests. Raymond Smith handles the resource management portfolio for Ngāti Kuya, the original occupiers of Marlborough. They could gain a fifth of any King Salmon licence because of the aquaculture settlement two years ago. But Smith says aquaculture is not their only priority. There are other ways to create wealth in the Marlborough Sounds. We can't do it if these people race in there and take over certain areas of significance. Um, we just can't, you know, we can't develop something that's already developed. Uh, and once things become privatised, as we've seen in the treaty settlement, we cannot touch anything that's, that's in private hands. So at the moment it's in everybody's hands, or it's in the, the Board of Inquiry's hands. Um, and I hopefully they give it back to us in the same state that they got it in. Commercial use of the Marlborough Sound's resources go back more than a century. These are the remnants of the Tory Channel whaling station on Arapawa Island. Hundreds of Māori locals were employed here until it closed in 1963. Today, Marlborough's high Māori unemployment would be alleviated by jobs King Salmon could create. Only Te Aotearoa Trust has agreed to joint venture with the company. At first they opposed King Salmon, but changed their minds because of the long-term benefits. They say Māori shouldn't miss out. Things change, nothing stays the same. And if we are to um, benefit or survive as a people, we need to change as well. And I think um, the trustees, Te Aotearoa uh, trustees, recognise that. But change does not mean that we compromise our values or what's important to us. In this instance, the most important thing was the environment. It was um, being kaitiaki. It was uh, looking after our whānau. It was uh, the Māori of uh, the moana, the flora and the fauna. So moving with the times is not about ditching your values. The whole Kaupapa was initiated through a change of government legislation. It was that government legislation that opened the doors to this type of application that we've now seen, uh, the plan change application, in this particular case, an ancillary plan change application. So we needed to mitigate the safety net arrangements to ensure that should at least some of that plan change be granted, that we were positioned for our people to receive the best benefits possible, and that's what we have done. Those benefits would pass on to the iwi's 3,000 beneficiaries. Yeah. One is Trevor Watson. He disagrees with the trust decision to support King Salmon and is using another piece of law to fight the company, the Coastal and Marine Area Act. Trevor and his family can claim unbroken occupation of Arapawa Island since the 1820s. And that makes Trevor's family eligible to claim customary rights. The 12k radius of his claim takes in King Salmon's proposed sites on Arapawa and Papatua. The claim would also test who owns the water space in Marlborough. The Crown claims nobody owns the foreshore and seabed, or Takutai Moana. They also claim nobody owns the water, the awa. So in that case, how can the Crown or any of its agencies grant to the likes of King Salmon licenses to occupy the water and similarly the power stations and the like. It also raises the question of 
how can the Crown issue any applicant for the Takutai Moana a title? That's a question that will be posed at Waikawa Marae in Picton this week, where King Salmon's EPA hearings are being held. Ngāti Kuata, Te Atiawa and Ngāti Kuia will also be heard. Each has unique concerns about the 35-year consents King Salmon wants in Marlborough. They say that it will come right after 10 years. That's only after a short term of working the farm. But once they start working them for 35 years, it'll take a lot longer. Uh, we are, we are, they can alienate us for 50 years. And that's not what we want to see in our, in, in our plan to get back to our rohe. You know, the, the, the Crown clearly said when we went through the treaty process, this is a time to right the wrongs. If the King Salmon farms are approved, it could have implications for iwi in other coastal areas. The next chapter in the race for New Zealand's water space. You'll leave with that.